Uh, so for section 4.4, we're going to be looking at the multiplication rule. Uh, the idea is we're going to be doing uh, two events this time. So we're going to be dealing with more than one event. So when we say the probability of A and B, we're not talking about just an overlap. The key on this is that we are dealing with uh, multiple events. And so multiple events means that and is going to not just mean like what's the probability of an overlap, it's what's the probability that A occurs, event A occurs on the first trial, and event B occurs on the second trial. So say for instance you were to flip a coin and roll a die. What's the probability that you would flip the coin and get a head and roll the die and get a 5? Let's start by listing out all the outcomes, okay? There is a multiplication principle that I want to bring up now. will tell you how many outcomes there should be. All you need to do is take the number of outcomes for event A multiply them by the number of outcomes for event B if you have event C we time there are C and D and E but for now it's just going to be A and B. So the first thing we're doing is flipping a coin. How many outcomes are there? Well, heads or tails, so that would be two. I'm rolling a die. How many outcomes are there? Well, six, one through six. So how many are there together if I flip a coin and roll a die? A lot of people look at that and go, well, six and two, the total will be eight. That's actually incorrect, and we're going to kind of verify that. I'll show it to you, right? But the idea is that we are going to use the multiplication principle, which, which says two times six, there will be 12 total outcomes. Let's list that out. Let's start by saying, okay, we could uh, flip the coin, get heads and a one, or heads and the die could give us a two, or heads and, heads and, heads and, heads and, okay? So that would be all the heads could be matched with the numbers 1 through 6. Or we could get tails with 1, tails 2, tails 3, tails 4, tails 5, tails 6. And that would be all the outcomes. Notice how many are there. So the sample space is those 12 outcomes. Now the question is, well, what's the probability of getting ahead and rolling a 5? Well, that would be one outcome, right? Out of the total, 12. So the probability of H5 is 1 out of 12. So we can do this visually, and that's not a bad thing. It's not a problem. Um, but as things get more and more complicated, as the sample spaces get larger, we don't want to have to keep making these. So what else could we do? Well, there's going to be multiplication rules. The multiplication rule is as follows. If I want to know what's the probability of A and B, that and, remember, does not mean to multiply. We already have something, or sorry, it does not mean to add. Um, we already have something that means add, that's or, and actually means, means to multiply, two probabilities. So we look at this and go, well, what's the probability of getting heads if I flip a coin? One half. What's the probability of getting the number five if I roll a die? And when I multiply those, I get... I want to add one more thing before we go on to the next example. I did not mean for that to happen. Um, what if I said, what's the probability of getting, let's say, tails or an odd number? I'm sorry, and an odd number. Once again, I could look at the sample space and I say, I'm looking for everything that's tails and odds. How many are there? Well, one, three, and five of tails. Uh, two. So that would be three out of the 12 total, 
125, 1 fourth, either way, I'm fine. How would this formula work, right? What's the probability of getting tails? Times, what's the probability of getting an odd number if I roll a die? Well, there are three numbers out of the six. That would give me, or, so there are going to be times where we have a, a listing of all the possible outcomes. I would use those to answer the questions. There are other times where we can use the rules. The answer should be the same. What if we draw two marbles without looking from a container that holds two, 10 blue marbles and four red marbles? What's the probability you draw two red marbles? Well, the probability, let's say first of all, our n, we have 10 blue and four red. So n is 14 marbles, right? What's the probability of getting a red and a red? This is one where I don't want to list out all the sample space of everything I could pick out. This is what I would do. What's the probability that the first marble is red? There are four reds out of the 14 marbles. And means we're going to take and multiply. What's the probability the second marble is red? Well, there are four red marbles out of the 14. Some of you are freaking out, going, wait a second, you just took a marble from me. Because this situation, you are drawing those two marbles. Are you putting them in your pocket or are you giving them back? We don't like to give things back, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So this is it going to be considered with replacement. This assumes we give that marble back so that each time there are four red marbles and each time there's a total of 14. So we get 16 out of 196. I'm not really even interested in reducing that. Let's just do 16 out of 196 and 0 0.01082. But some of you are like, well, I don't like that because I'm taking two marbles. So, okay, what if it was without replacement? You're like, I am keeping that marble. It is mine, right? Well, then the probability of red and red would be different. Because the probability of the first one would still be 4 out of 14. But the second time, there would no longer be 4 red marbles. There would only be 3 out of the... Now there's no longer 14 marbles, because we took one, right? So now it's 13. So this would become, what, 12 over... So 12 over 182. 12 over 182. Or point, I think it was 67, 67. Okay, something's off on that, 12 over, so about 0, 0.66. Six. All right, so this changes it, and what this does is it leads us into this discussion about when the probability changes, you're dealing with an event that is dependent. When you're dealing with a, a probability that stays the same, you're dealing with an event that is independent. Okay, so what happens is, so independent, the probabilities don't affect each other. And I always do the wrong one. I believe it is this one. Talk to your English people if you're not sure. I'm not sure all the time. Dependent is where the probabilities do affect each other. This should make sense. Many people in the class are currently dependents, right? You are dependent on your parents means what? You affect each other. If you come in late, that affects them. If you um, have an issue with, with money, that affects each other, right? Um, 
If you come back at 2 a.m. in the morning, your parents are sitting there going, I couldn't sleep. I was worried sick, right? That affects them, right? If I come home at 2 in the morning, my parents could care less. My parents aren't sitting there going, where were you, right? I am now independent. My choices don't necessarily affect them as much, right? Uh, now, if I'm coming home at 2 in the morning, my wife's sitting there with a shock. I'm wondering where I was, but the idea is what? My wife and I are dependent of each other. Um, me with my parents, I am now an independent. Okay, same with the probabilities here. So, independent events, let's go ahead and separate these again. So, for the independent, I'll just move this over. Okay, then the probability of A and B is what we already saw. Take the probabilities, and and means to multiply them. If they are dependent, then the probability for A and B becomes a little different. It is still the probability of A, but we multiply it by the probability of B, given that A has occurred. Some of you are freaking out. You have not seen this before. This stands for given that. All that means is given that we know that A has occurred, Or is true okay so given that all that does is given that I knew I already had a red marble I had one less red marble given that I kept it I have 13 total instead of 14 that's all you need to know for given that so far it's given that we know that that's occurred or is true we will build that in 4 5 okay so that seems weird right now, but for now, just go ahead, and, go ahead and write that down, and we're going to keep building on that. The given that's should be pretty logical in this section. They'll get crazier. You'll see. Okay, let's keep going. Multiplication rule I already talked about, so I'm just going to keep going. Following table results from 985 pedestrian deaths were caused by accidents. Okay? Um, what... If one person of the pedestrian is randomly selected, what is the probability it involves an intoxicated pedestrian and intoxicated driver? What's the probability of intoxicated pedestrian and intoxicated driver? I'll put IP. Intoxicated pedestrian and intoxicated driver. Okay? Well, I'm looking at this table. We should probably get some totals on here. So 59, 266, double check my numbers, yell at your screen if I'm wrong. Seventy nine, five eighty one. that's just 660. For a grand total of 885. Maybe. 5979. 266, 581. Eight forty seven. And eight forty seven and one thirty eight is still 985. See, that's why we check it. Hopefully you're yelling at your screen. Check that total total. Make sure we're good. So here's what a lot of people will do is they'll go, oh, this is an and, right? So they go, well, what's this is basically the proper uh, probability of um, intoxicated pedestrian, which is 325 over the total times the probability of an intoxicated driver, which is 138 out of 985 times and 0 0.046. Uh, which is wrong. And you're like, well, why? That's the rule. Well, no. Is this independent or dependent? You're like, I don't know. It doesn't tell me. 
So I just use the rule I know. No. Guys, use the table. What's the probability if I choose somebody out of all the 985 that the, both the pedestrian was intoxicated and the driver? What's the probability it is an intoxicated pedestrian? Make sure I do this right. Yep. What's the probability that it's both? Well, that would just be this 59, right? So that would be, what it should be is just the 59 out of 985. 0 0.059, round that up, so 0.060. So use the table when they give you the table. In fact, this is a way of verifying because this is the probability of the IP and ID from the table and it doesn't equal the 0 .046. So this actually implies that there is a dependency in this relationship. We will have a chapter later on where we're actually going to verify does this, is it close enough to this to assume independency or dependency, right? We're actually going to be testing that later on. Um, but for now, if they give you the table, use the table. Okay? Don't assume, don't assume independency. Use the table. They said, what's the probability of this A and B? Just find that probability. I know some of you are screaming at me from the beginning to do that, but I'm telling you on the test, I will see people look at their note card and just do this and it will be zero points, and it's really sad, so please be careful. If two, deaths, if two different pedestrian deaths are randomly selected, what's the probability that in both cases the pedestrian and the driver were intoxicated? So this is saying we know the probability of it occurring once is 59 out of 985. What's the probability of this occurring twice? Well, 59 out of 985, right? times, well, wait a second, we just took one of those cases out, right? So instead of 59, this is now 58 out of, now instead of 985 cases, we have 984. This is going back to what we did before. This is two events. This is the probability of it occurring the first time and the second time, okay? So 59 out of 985 times, 58 out of 984. 0 0.003, so 0 0.004. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just take it 0 0.035 so we can see it far enough. Okay? What if we did it with replacement? Now, that's like nonsense. Like, why would we put the case back in and potentially choose somebody twice? But let's see what happens. So what if we did it twice, but the second time we just kept it 59 and 985? Is it the same? Well, we're basically off by a ten thousandth, right? It didn't make that big of a difference. So in this situation, So what's interesting with this is that technically this answer on the top is the correct answer. It is the best, it is the most accurate answer. But what we want to see is that when on the bottom, when we have a large sample size, and here we only had 985, right? And we took away one person, it really doesn't make a big enough difference to create a difference of dependence or independence. So when we get a large enough sample size and I pull one person out of it, we assume independence. Why do we do that? Because it didn't really change the answer that much. And a lot of times if I'm doing this over and over and over again, it becomes so minute of a difference and the mathematics becomes so much more complicated to try to get that exact value. We just say, don't worry about it. It's close enough. 
So let's see how that builds because this is kind of built in previous ones. Like I said, I would be fine if you did this question either of these ways. The first one, it implies we kept the person, so I would change the numbers. But if I just said, what's the probability if I chose two pedestrian deaths, either of these would be fine. Because it's a large enough sample size that we, we really have independence where that one person doesn't make that significant of a difference. The following problems are going to be a mixture of stuff that we've done. Well, let's see how we do. So, oh, we need some totes, some totals. I'm going to ruin that word for somebody. So, 6877. Sorry about that. Where were we? 68. And what was it? 77, 14, 11. About 170. 251. Plus 175. Plus 64. Plus 8. About 498. This one I could almost do in my head. How about a 5 and 5? And this one, 23, 43. Let's do the total total. 170 plus 498 plus 55 and 43. 766. I hope. We'll check it. Going to the right, 68, 251. Uh, 10 and 20, 349, 77, 175, 13 and 6, 14, 64, Twenty two and sixteen, and this one I think I can do. How about thirty? And let's total that three forty nine, two seventy one, and the last one was thirty. Seven sixty six, seven sixty six. Feeling good. Okay. So, what is the probability that someone is threatened and in the United States? Okay. Threatened. I'm looking at all the threatened, but I'm only looking at all the U.S. Am I going to use an and multiplication rule? Please don't. Just look at the categories. Right. Threatened and U.S. That totals fifty five out of, and put that as a decimal. Right. What's the probability that we have an endangered foreign bird? That's endangered, looking at the left, and foreign, and bird. That's only the 175 out of the total 766. Get your decimal, write that out. Okay, I don't want to be using the and rules on this when they give me this table. Find these probabilities. Threatened and in the United States. Threatened U.S. There it is. That's threatened in U.S. Endangered foreign bird. Endangered foreign bird. There's B. Mammal. Here we got to be careful. Or a threatened foreign species. Because now I'm counting all of the mammals. And I'm also including all of the threatened foreign species. All of the threatened foreign species species. I'm including all of these. So I'm including the 349 mammals or means add to that the 43 threatened foreign species and if you put that in that is not your answer. You need to know this from before. Look at what we did. When I count this and this 
you have to subtract that's what that is that's what that is minus the overlap the overlap I don't want to use a formula for that it's just the 20 so just subtract the 20 out of 766 so 349.43 minus the 20. How about 372? And just to double check, 372 out of 766. Just make sure that you round that, so 0 0.486. Okay. Harris poll found 46% of Americans say they suffer great stress at least once a week. If three people are selected at random, find the probability that all three say they suffer stress at least once a week. We're saying what's the probability that the first person stressed, and the second person stressed, and the third person stressed. Well, the probability of stress in this situation is that 0.46, right? So what's the probability that one person is stressed? What does AND mean? I don't have a table. I need to multiply. Is that 0.46 going to change? If I choose somebody that's stressed, does the probability of the next person being stressed change? It technically does, but it's so minute, remember? We're dealing with all Americans. So if I pull one person out, does the probability really change? Not significantly enough, so we keep it. And the third one, we keep it. So we have a large enough sample size that we assume independence, just like we said in that last example right here. Large enough sample size, we get to assume independence. It doesn't make that big of a difference. That was only 900-something people. This is all Americans, right? So 0 0.46, 0 0.46, 0 0.46, 0 0.00970. Technically, if you want to go third decimal place, oh, 097. Okay, I was going to say. All right. Uh, University in Western Pennsylvania, five burglaries reported in 2003, 16 in 2004, 32 in 2005. Researcher wishes, wishes to select a random four burglaries to further investigate by the probability all four occur in 2004. So we're saying the probability of 04 and 04 and 04. And 04. What's the probability of the first one is selected in 2004? Uh, we need a total. What is there? 21 and 32, 53. <coughs> What's the probability of the first one we chose is in 2004? Well, there are 16 out of the 53. N means multiply. What's the probability the next one comes in 2004? Does it stay 16 out of 53? This is a very small sample size. That one person is going to make a difference. This is dependent. So this becomes 15 out of 52. Then 14 out of 51. And 13 out of 50. Why? This one was a large enough sample space. So large sample space. We get independence. Really small sample space. That one person makes a big difference. So we need to factor them in. So let's say 16 out of 53. And what was it? 15 out of 52. And it's 14 out of 51, then it's 13 out of 50. 0 0.006. Um, real quick, 
just for fun and giggles, if I looked at this, what if I said the probability of, I'm just going to do um, three burglaries. We selected four, right? Yeah, so we're selecting three, three burglaries. And I'm going to go 2004, 2004, and 2005. Well, the 2004 we saw was 16 out of 53. If I go another 2004, there's no longer 16, there is. Now, if I switch to 2005, how many 2005s are left? We haven't touched those, have we? So there are still 32 of those. Don't start making those numbers get smaller. We haven't taken any of those. We The reason the top and the bottom changed here, uh, the bottom changed, I promise, is because we're taking one out of the top and the bottom. This time the, stop, the top stays 32 because we haven't touched those yet. And the bottom is now 51. And you can calculate that. I was just wanting you to focus on that this one stays the 32 because we hadn't touched those yet. Both of these are still dependent because both probabilities change as we go. So that should be it for this section. Kind of a hefty section, but we're going to keep building on it. So get it done, and I'll see you guys.